What is up everybody? Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Train. We got ourselves a 2024 Dodge Promaster. This vehicle has a few things going on we're going to go ahead and take a look at and I'm going to share with you what I found here. All right everybody, we got to take a quick time out. I want to tell you Looking back on this vehicle, I'm playing Monday quarterback, hindsight's 2020. you know how it goes. So please watch this video, pay attention to some of the details, let me know what you're thinking. In the end, I'm going to talk about what I am thinking might have been going on, on top of, I guess, what we call a compounded problem here. So we'll catch you at the end. So get on site, just so you guys know, this is a uh, accident vehicle. Uh, we got 1,000 miles or 1,800 miles on this vehicle, and... Uh, coming on site, I was told we had a theft uh, light on, and that's kind of like the customer's main concern. You can see here we do have a theft indicator. Oh, it just went out. It'll come back. Hang on a second. That is hilarious. There it is. So press brake pedal and push button to start. This is a push button start ProMaster. So uh, pushing a push button, we should be able to turn this thing off. We can't turn the key off. The only way to get anything to turn off here is to disconnect the battery, and the key will be off at that point and then you can go ahead and reconnect the battery. So you can see we're lit up like a little bit of a Christmas tree. We have a no crank situation. I want to take you guys along as I did this. I, I do know what's wrong with the vehicle, but I want to show you what I fought with here. We'll get our Y-Tech plugged in, our Micropod going, and I'm going to walk through and show you guys what I saw here. And just so you know, right off the bat, uh, this has been looked at pretty good here, as you see. So uh, the whole front end was off this thing. And when I arrived on site, I had no communication with my YTEC setup because the secure gateway module, which is right here, was unplugged. They had a bypass cable plugged in. So uh, first of all, I had no communication with anything. So I had to plug in the secure gateway module right here. So hopping into the YTEC here, you do see that we have ourselves uh, 70 DTCs present, beautiful, right? Let's take a look what we got going on. This is how I got to the vehicle today. Just if you wanted to see the DTCs, we can go hit all DTCs. We have park brake, actuator circuits. There's stuff in the back that's not uh, put the back together, but some of the big stuff that I see is this engine control module missing message, uh, ECU operational mode status, internal signal invalid. Now, I poked around and tried to figure out what was going on here. There are a ton of codes as you see, and I can clear them out and we can see what comes back just so we only have active code shorn, shown. If you ever do this type of thing, always do a pre-scan report and save all the codes you had to begin with. But I had this uh, invalid data received uh, from the engine control module, but as you see, we don't have communication with our PCM. So at this point, I went old school. I went ahead and found my powers and grounds for my PCM. They all go to this uh, C1 connector. This thing's hanging externally here because I did not want it to get shorted onto uh, the battery positive terminal right there. That would be bad news. We don't want that. So I went ahead and checked my CAN bus signals. Good, that's your CAN C. I checked my powers, which are three green wires here. Uh, there's three green wires that are main powers. There's also a orange and green, uh, heavier diameter orange and green, and then uh, three black wires in here. So I tested all those wires. I did not front probe the connector, I'll tell you that right now, but I was testing very close using some other methods, which those of you, you that know, know, and we can talk about that later for another day, but I'm just trying to get a result here. I have everything I needed for this. I actually scoped out with a uh, AES wave view scope, my CAN data signal, that looked good. So I had everything that I needed for the PCM to communicate, but it wouldn't communicate. So I didn't show it all on camera, but I did check all three things that are the most common causes of a no communication situation. Number one, powers and grounds to a module. It's very common for us to not have a power or a ground to a module causing a communication problem. So we always have to check that, and I did in this situation. Number two is the actual data communication lines themselves. We want to check with the scope ideally, but I checked with my multimeter first, but then I did put a scope on the data lines to make sure we had nice, clean, tight, uh, relatively uniform with changing data on the communication lines at the engine control module. Everything looked good here. I was happy. 
The third thing that I didn't show on camera that I checked is to make sure we don't have an external source uh, or external component that goes to the module pulling down that module or the power to the module or a network issue like that. Uh, what I'm getting at here is like a five volt reference getting pulled low. If you ever have a communication problem, check your five volt reference real quick. It takes two seconds. If your five volt reference is high, you usually have a bad ground. If your five volt reference is low, uh, usually there's something else going on, something pulling it down on uh, one of the components on that five volt reference circuit. In this instance, my five volt reference was spot on. So those are the three common things that I've seen causing a communication problem. At this point, my brain's like, well, we gotta think outside the box here. Either A, I got a bad computer and that's a big call to make, or B, I better make sure I don't leave a stone unturned and start investigating a little more. In this instance, you're gonna see here, it's more of a logic issue that we are having and I'll show you what's up. Okay, so that's when I started really paying attention back to this, these codes. If we just look in the body control module, operational mode status, internal signal, invalid. This was very confusing to me. So we got a bunch of other codes going on here uh, that need to be addressed. But my big concern in my brain, this is not really a good situation when I can't turn the key off like this, like I showed you before. We can't do that and it just isn't working. The only way to key it off is to disconnect the battery and then reconnect the battery. And that's not a good thing either. We don't wanna have to be doing that. So I chased after uh, uh, that issue there, and I was also concerned about the, uh, uh, the security light on the dash. So taking a look at our RFH hub, we don't have any code saying that we have invalid, serial, uh, invalid key data or anything of the sort like that. We don't have anything going on of that nature. So I started looking at what else doesn't communicate. Well, the adaptive cruise control here is not communicating. Now looking at the CAN bus diagrams, what I had seen is that this is a pretty much straight shot here for the CAN C. I don't know why that would not, that would cause a problem. Let's take a look. So here's our vehicle here, our history. I want to take a look at my wiring diagrams and we're going to look at our communication. And this is a CAN C bus system. So we're going to click on this and you're going to see here we have all these modules listed across. There's lots of stuff going on. But the big thing to know is we do have our adaptive cruise control here. And we have our powertrain control module here. Now that connector, this connector, this, uh, I think it's I283A. That is this guy right here. And our adaptive cruise control is not plugged in. So here's our adaptive cruise control module you see that's got to go in a bumper. We had a bunch of wiring damage that had to get looked at right in here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Let's see if you guys can't watch. So I plug that in. Now if we go back over to our Y-Tech here, all of a sudden you can see the PCM is online. So, if we go back to our body control module, I'm gonna take a look at our DTCs in the BCM. We have a lot of stored codes. So our engine control module, fire protection is a, a interesting code. I did look at that as an earlier thing. I did go ahead and into the, I believe it was in the body control module, you have an option for that, but let's go ahead and clear these out real quick. So we do have this uh, signal invalid, ECM control module, EPS fire protection. That's the only sig and, uh, thing we have going in our BCM. Let's go ahead back here to our PCM. And we've got a boatload of codes in there. Uh, a lot of open fuel injector circuit codes, all kinds of stuff. Let's go ahead and clear all these out and just see what comes back. And we do have some fuel injector codes. It's gonna have some other stuff going on. And I think, uh, I think there might be another harness that's unplugged on this. I gave it a good once over and I was trying to look at all the different things. But as you see, there's quite a few things that could be going on. But the shop isn't so worried about all these other issues. They're kind of looking at uh, making sure we can turn a key on and off. And now the vehicle will power off and power back on. So I'm gonna let them know about all these other issues. But you can see here our theft light is back, is off now. We got the little coffee light telling us to have a break. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and push the push button start here. And you can see the po vehicle powers on and off. So hit it twice. Oh. Push the button with the key fob. Let me try that. There we go. I had to hit it with a key fob. I'm not sure exactly why that is. It says four collision warning. And what else do we have? We should have a starting vehicle if I crank it. So that's good. It does crank and turn off. So I think that's where they want to go ahead here and leave this off. I should go back and do a full post scan. Let's go ahead and clear every code out and then see where we're at just so we all see this together. But my goal of this little story is to tell you guys about how you got to make sure all the systems on a vehicle are online. Otherwise, you can really be wasting a lot of time trying to diagnose things as one problem that may actually be another problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do a complete all DTC system scan and I'm going to clear all these DTCs out of the vehicle and then we're going to see what pops back. I'm kind of curious. Got some fluffy hair here. So we got fuel injector control circuits open or pending. Park brake. Uh, park brake system failure. Let's take a look at our topo map here. You can see we've got that stuff going on. I'm going to go back into that PCM. So these fuel injector codes were caused by a missing fuse, but that didn't have anything to do with the no communication issue. So take a look here. I want to show you. This is the OE service information from Stellantis. This is their information. You can see this diagram showing us that we have two fuse 17s. But this fuse 17 really is fuse 22 or fuse 11. I don't remember which one it is. I did click on the feedback button to let Chrysler know they have a typo, but when we were checking our powers and grounds, I checked the green wires, this red and green, and I forgot to tell you about this dark blue and green. All those were A-OK, -okay. but this circuit here did not have any power because it was missing a fuse. We got the fuse in there, and it did go ahead and fire right up. That was no, no issue. So this is very interesting stuff I just want to share with you guys. Hopefully, make sure the vehicle's all put together before you try to go messing around diagnosing. Because I spent a solid 35, 40 minutes poking around at that ECM and looking at other things before I finally told the shop, let's get that harness plugged in for the adaptive cruise control. And i got to be honest with you. Take a look here. <clears throat> Here's our adaptive cruise control module right here. It's got a ground, it's got a power or two and a couple data lines. I'm not sure why that would cause the whole works to take a dump on this thing. So these newer cars are getting to be very complex. We've got to pay attention to what's going on. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and try to play this problem out uh, Monday quarterback style here. I'm thinking about the situation we have. We arrived on site, no communication with the engine control module. We plug in the adaptive cruise control module, and then we have communication with the ECM or the powertrain control module. However, we have a crank no start until we put the injector fuse back in. Now, could it be a logic issue if the PCM sets a code for all the injectors, will it automatically shut down if we don't have the adaptive cruise control module online too? Sounds kind of odd. I don't I don't understand it, and I'm kind of curious. What I wish I would have done, and this is like hindsight's 2020, I wish I would have been back on site, and I can't get back to the vehicle now, but I wish I could go ahead and have the fuel injector fuse in so we don't have the fuel injector codes, and then go ahead and pull the uh, adaptive cruise control module offline and then see what happens. I really wonder what would happen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. It's an interesting situation and these vehicles are getting more and more complex all the time and more difficult for us to diagnose. So if you want to have more input or more knowledge about basic electrical testing, which is the foundation for everything that I do on a daily basis, be sure to check out handsonautotraining.com. We have the Essential Electricity for Automotive Technicians class. Great stuff. It's about a two-hour course or so. If you take that, I guarantee you, you will have a better understanding of basic electricity. Then you can move into the more advanced stuff, such as PicoScope, Snap-on Scope. We have a ton of stuff. I have about, what, 90 videos up there that are, are not on YouTube right now. So you guys have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch. If you like this content, be sure to like, subscribe. Give me that thumbs up, hit that notification bell. We'll see you next time. Thank you.